What's going on, everybody? Uh, trying to bring to you today a, a how-to to remove a carburetor off a Iger 400 LTF. Um, at first, I thought it was the Pepcock was the issue, so I replaced that with one uh, that uh, there's a bunch of other videos on. It's off of like a Yamaha Blaster or something like that. But as a review, uh, a reserve on and off, which is good. So. This will help in the process of removing the carburetor because step one is to turn the fuel off um, and then from there you have to take this plastic piece off, your seat of course, <clears throat> you're going to have to move the air box so it can wiggle and jiggle and then take this other side off and then this off. Um, I'm going to do that and I'm going to try to do, be as in depth as possible instead of just be like, oh look it's out. Um, so that's what I see on almost all the videos. We're going to try to be in depth with it. Um, stand by. Hey guys, just an update video. So uh, this shift knob here, um, which is going to look like this, <clears throat> is going to have two holes on the front with two baby screws that are right there. You're going to remove that. You're going to remove the air box from here. There's two clips that you pop here, pop here. It lifts this way and slides out. Be careful, these tabs can be brittle. You're going to undo this. Uh, there's a bolt that goes right here, which looks like this. Basically has a little grommet that it sits in. It sits like that, <clears throat> and it'll be sitting right here. So undo that, pop these free, uncradle that piece. Your air box is exposed. Your gas cap will be on at that point, so you undo that, and you take this off, and then this whole piece will just lift off, just like this, to help give you access to the carburetor. Um, one thing you can do as a precaution if you don't want gas fumes everywhere is you can put the gas cap back on. But this should help give you access to the carburetor a little bit better. Um, there should be a bolt here, bolt here, and I think the rest is just set in there so it should just lift out. Um, you'll have to undo the fuel line but I'll show that in just a moment. So you're going to have your uh, fuel pepcock which will be right here. Um, you're going to have a line attached here that goes down into your carburetor. Um, I had already replaced this. Usually it's like a plier tab like the guy down there. You squeeze them together with a pair of pliers and you pull it and slide it off to the side. These are just like a normal uh, hose clamp. I like to replace those with these just because they're a little bit nicer. You can get them at Harbor Freight or anywhere like that. Anyways, you're going to make sure it's to the off position and you're going to pull that off <clears throat> and then you should be able to work free on the gas tank. Guys, what we went ahead and did and just removed these two bolts uh, from the top of the gas tank. They're 10 millimeter. They go right here. Um, it looks like the gas tank will lift out, but I'm thinking I'm going to leave it just like that because that'll give me enough clearance to work out that carburetor and make sure everything else is unplugged like it's supposed to be. So we'll go on from here. Uh, step two will be to, or three or four, whichever one we're on now, will uh, be release the throttle cable, which this goes up to here, which is basically this guy right there. So you're going to take, <clears throat> this one was an 8 mil, just with a little wrench. You're going to go in here. It's easy, easy to see from the top right there. Um, you're going to do, and you're going to unscrew that, and that's going to come free. And then once that does, is you're going to come over here, take off that bolt, and then this piece will come off, and you'll disconnect the throttle cable inside. Stand by. So you're going to have this small Phillips head screw, and it's going to be mounted right there. You're going to pull that piece off just like this. And you're going to be exposing your whole throttle body, or not your throttle body, but your throttle cable. And uh, you're gonna go ahead and remove this piece in just a second. I can show this very well. So you got to use your finger to press up on it, and then you're gonna try to wiggle this guy so that it'll come out. I've just moved it back. But that's all you have to do is pop that throttle cable out of this uh, bracket. And your product should look like this when you're done. Just set this to the side, don't move it out of the way. Um, just set it to the side right there. <clears throat> Take note to where your uh, adjustment is currently on your carburetor for your stop for your throttle. Uh, that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, I'm going to actually replace this carburetor because this one is really old. I'm pretty sure the float inside of it is bad um, because <clears throat> it'll idle fine, it'll start fine, but if you try to give it any throttle, it bogs, it spits, it cracks, it pops everything under the book if you ease into it it'll help a little bit but it still does the same thing which is usually a tall tale sign that the float is cracked because when the bowl is filled with fluid or with gas 
when you go to blip throttle, it'll suck it clean, and then it has nothing to basically give to replace that fuel with, so the float doesn't drop like it's supposed to to give that air passageway and the fuel passageway to fill the bowl to give you more gas. So on to the next step. Another thing to note is uh, there's this back uh, hose clamp that goes over this uh, black tube here, which is your air box, which goes into here. Um, on the other side, there's a Phillips head. Um, I undid it already, but I was just basically pushing it to the side so that the face of the carburetor is exposed so that you're able to wiggle it out. Once you get the other side, C-clamp pulled off, which is right there, but you get it from the other side. So this four-wheeler has what they call an idle adjustment, which will basically be this um, tube or wire that goes around that has a basically a screw in there to adjust your idle so make it run better. Um, it actually runs around to the other side. So take note of that. <clears throat> It'll be this guy that comes around right here. And there's a little C-clip that this should just pop out of. Um, or... Yeah, it should just pop right out of that C-clip just like that. Set that to the side. And then you're going to have your top... Your top uh, hose clamp, which will be right here, which is loosened already. Once you do that, you should be able to start to wiggle your carburetor and it should start to come free and then with that just double check everything to make sure you have everything unplugged once you do that you should be able to start to <coughs> wiggle the carburetor out of the way and out of its home which is going to be just like this see it starts to come out Let's see if i can get it positioned correctly because it's fighting between that hose and this front hose so you're gonna have to give it like a little twi twist and turn and Get it worked out of there. I need both hands for this, maybe. Let's see. Let's see if we can get this. There we go. There we go. And she's starting to come home. There we go. And. that piece and like so you're gonna have your carburetor out this is an air line you're gonna want to just pull that off and this is another vacuum line that goes to uh, the air box pop that guy off and you're set to go All right so this top piece right here um, what I thought was just a, an air line it's not it actually goes to your your top uh, mounted choke these Igers have a, a choke on the left handle bar um, from there, <clears throat> all you have to do is basically uh, take a, I just took a pair of pliers and you slowly just turn this uh, lefty loosey righty tidy and then it'll come out and it'll look like this little needle guy and then that'll actually free up your carburetor 100%. So here's some views of it if somebody's looking for one and they don't want to take theirs apart quite yet. And this is what it'll look like. So looking from the passenger side, it'll be like this. Your throttle cable will come in here, attached to there. And then this is your idle adjustment that goes to the passenger side or the driver's side, if you would, of the four-wheeler. And then this is looking at it from this side of the four-wheeler. <coughs> You're going to have <coughs> your choke right here that's going to be going up to the top handlebar. You're going to have your air hose that comes out that goes into your uh, air box. And this is your fuel line from your fuel tank and there's one hose that goes to the bottom right there on the end which is going to be this little guy which will most likely fall off as you're trying to wiggle everything out um, so just keep an eye out for that guy that just helps uh, get vacuum from um, the air atmosphere basically it's this atmosphere pull for the vacuum right, so uh, what I did is I took the carburetor out of course I went down to a local uh, motorcycle shop and got a replacement carburetor. Uh, this was like 90 bucks. This is uh, like an off-brand one. It'll still work just fine. Um, instead of having uh, the front vacuum for the Pepcock valve uh, diaphragm that was here, um, that's no longer there, so I don't have to worry about blocking that off. So that's one less week I have to worry about. Um, this is going to be my fuel supply. This is going to be my breather. It still has the same... Um, uh, throttle cable adjustment piece right here. It's just attached to the bottom so I don't have to worry about that piece being all over the place. 
Still has the same uh, style of a throttle cable setup. Still comes down through there and it still comes around, loops around and goes into there. Still has the same adjuster piece. So it's time to put her in there and see what she does. All right, this is gonna be hard to show you, but I'm gonna attempt to. So this is the wire that goes to the choke that's up on the left side of the handlebar. This will be in there like that. And there's gonna be, oh, I dropped it. This spring will be up on top of this. But before that, there's going to be this grommet up on top of here. And then this piece will be slid up on top of that. And then this spring will be inside of here, all behind that needle piece on here. So you're going to have to pull that needle piece out and then shimmy it off to get uh, it off of there. So you can put the new assembly on that came with the new one, if yours does. If it doesn't, reuse the old one if it's the same model carb. You'll be good to go. Your finished product will look something like this. Don't worry about if the hole looks too big. It does look massive compared to the little wire. It's the same diameter as the old one. So you'll be fine. And then uh, on from there, you're going to attach this to the carburetor. All right. Now I got the new carburetor in there almost all the way. It has to be seated all the way um, into both of the side of the motor and the side of the air filter. But I got it weaseled in there. And then you have your... Uh, throttle cable adjustment down here on the bottom. Everything seems to fit, so we're gonna continue the assembly process and uh, probably jump ahead to where we're all the way put together and do double checks. All right, a small update. We got uh, the air box side connected, the motor side connected to the, the carburetor. We have our throttle cable hooked up. We double checked uh, to make sure that we, we have a proper throttle cable. Um, you want it to be semi-tight, not super tight, but that's barely tapping on the button. So we have full extension, full release, like we should. Um, you might have to adjust it after you get the carburetor and everything put back together. But uh, this is the last, probably, snap video in between putting the fuel line on, which is super easy. It's right down there, and you put it onto the pup cock of the fuel tank. Put it all together and then she should fire so the next video will probably be it running or trying to run all right we got it all buttoned up <clears throat> everything's all tight in there still have to put the air box back on have to put the side pieces back on and then the tank cover first and then the shift knob for four-wheel drive all-wheel drive yeah put that on and tuck it away all right guys the Iger uh, 400 is all put back together. Carburetor is running great. Quads running great. No more hesitation. No more blowbacks. She runs like a brand new four wheeler. So hopefully that helped you guys in uh, adjusting and uh, getting your new carburetor put in or your Iger LAF 400. Um, we'll go from there. Hopefully this helped out. Comment below, subscribe, hit the bell button, you know the drill.